This is The Drive with Dale Lally and Matt Williamson on your 24-7 home of the black and gold. SNR. Steelers Nation Radio. Welcome to The Drive. I am Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson, and it is a Thursday here in Pittsburgh. Warmed up a little bit today. Yeah, nice but, day. But uh, chilly at night, warm in the day. It's fall. Yep, feels like fall in the bird. Love it. Absolutely. Uh, the Steelers getting on the practice field today, and some guys coming back. Oh, One yeah? notable guy who was limited today, uh, who hadn't been on the injury list yesterday, so that would be uh, tight end Pat Fryermuth. Mm. Uh, he's dealing with a calf issue. Those are going around. Yeah, wow. Um, and uh, was limited today uh, after practicing in full yesterday. So we'll see where that goes with uh, Friar Muth. Uh, but once again, for the second consecutive day, Jalen Warren, a limited participant today, and might be trending in the right direction. Yeah, that sounds like good news. You know, I mean, that he's out there, he's doing stuff. I think they could really, really use him. Friar Muth's a little concerning, I guess. But, you know, I mean, maybe it's nothing. Who knows? I mean, yeah, it, we'll you know. see. Um, but tomorrow's no, practice ex- will be telling. What's that? Tomorrow. Tomorrow's practice yeah, yeah. will be telling. No, I'm excited about Warren. I would love to see him in the mix. I think Najee could use some help, to be honest with yeah. you. And, you know, the, all these teams are stacking the boxes so much. And a receiving back, I think, could go a long way. Not that Najee can't catch the ball, but another option. They need all the playmakers they can get right now. Absolutely. Uh, Russell Wilson getting through another full practice today said he feels great. Good. Uh, so he's trending in the right direction. You mentioned Najee Harris. He was off yesterday, got a full practice in today. Uh, DeMonte KZ did not practice for the second day in a row. He's not looking good. No, that doesn't that. sound good. Uh, Minka Fitzpatrick back today after resting yesterday. Uh, Nick Herbig not going to play. Mm-hmm. How about this one? Alex Highsmith limited today. Wow, I didn't think he'd even see the field all week. Yeah, so, and again, as I mentioned before, so the way the NFL – does this now mm-hmm. if you go out and work with trainers on the side they have to list you as limited yeah yeah but at least you're doing something yeah at least you're got a chance i mean yeah. you're on the trending at least right, in the right, right direction right. to return for sure next week i was gonna say that's the next thing out of my mouth is uh, most of those guys sure sound like next week at the latest yeah you know that's great some less than others uh jalen warren um mm-hmm. you know and i asked Specifically, I, we were talking to Justin Fields today. I'll mention a, a story about Fields that he told today a little bit later here. Okay. Um, but I said, you know, how, how much can you use that guy? If, if Jalen's back this week, what does he bring to the offense? He's like, well, you know, he, he's another great runner, great in protection, mm-hmm. a, a great player to, to, you know, to get the ball to in third down situations. Like, no this doubt. Is, you know, this is what they've been, you know, what they've been missing here. Um, they tried to to manage Harris's snaps a little bit, particularly in this last game, so he's not out there a hundred percent of the snaps. Right. It's a and he's had a serious workload year to date. Too, yeah. You know. Um. And so he only played what one third down snap the entire game yeah. last time. Yeah. 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 Which that's usually Warren's role, yeah. anyways. But on on third downs, he played one snap. Yeah. There's so, only seven. I mean, there was or there was more than seven. Yeah. There's but, not a lot of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. Getting Jalen Warren back to take some of those third down snaps again, probably all of them gives right. you a gives you another weapon out there in the passing game. He makes guys miss. Yep, and does all this. We haven't gotten to see him at all this year. I know. I feel like we've been robbed because I th- think he's been one of my favorite Steelers to watch just from a fan angle. I think he's a tremendous football player. I, I don't think it's a company secret, but they flirted with some pony stuff in camp. Maybe you'd even get both of them on the field together. He's a much different style than Najee, and frankly, he might be a better fit for this offense. I would like to it's at just least a, see it. It's just it, another right. piece that their offense has been missing Yeah, pretty much the entire year. Yes, absolutely. And I think there's an argument that he was, if not the, one of the best offensive players on this team last year. And easy to overlook because he's listed as two on the depth chart, but boy, I think he'd help a lot. Yeah, I do too. Uh, Isaac Sayamalo, full participant today after getting the day off yesterday. Michael Pruitt, also limited again today ah, after being okay. limited yesterday. He was so one he's I was writing off 100%. trending in the right direction. Uh, no Cordero Patterson today. Mentioned Fryermuth. TJ Watt, a full participant today. Uh, there was Cam, a lot of wrestlers yeah. yesterday, right? Cam Hayward given another day off for rest. That doesn't concern me at all with him. Mm-mm. Uh, DeMarvin Leal did not participate because. You know, he's not going to play this week. Mike Him Thomas. and Herbig are yeah. not playing, right? Uh, and then Larry Ogunjobi limited today after being uh, resting yesterday. Still dealing with it, kind of that after effects of the groin issue. Mm. Ease him back into it, but I don't expect that to be anything 
Okay. It keeps him out of the game on Sunday either. He didn't play a ton of snaps last week, though. I mean, it, yeah. they, they could have probably used more, but that's uh, he has a little bit of an injury history. Always seems to be something going on, so I just want to pay attention to that one too. Yeah. So I mentioned we're we're talking to uh, Justin Fields today. Yeah. And uh, so when my son was my oldest son was in middle school, he had this the long hair that was mm-hmm. you know, everybody liked to have back then, and. I warned him one time. Oh, he, he was getting a C in a class, and he was getting the C in the class because he wasn't doing his homework. Well, it tends to happen. Yeah, yeah right, he right. Was just kind of being Be a kid. goof, right? Yeah. yeah. So I warned him. I said, "Hey, you should be getting. You could be getting a B in this class if you just turned in your homework. Just turn it in. Just turn it in. You don't have to they'll be that good the, at it. Right? Yeah, yeah. They'll give you the credit for it. You're, that's that's the reason why right now you've got the C. I said, if you don't do this, I'm going to shave your head. <laughs> I think that's where we were going. With the this. hair is going to go. Okay. And so after two weeks, I looked back at the. You, you didn't say the B. You just say turn your homework. Turn in. your homework in. Okay. And he didn't do it. And so I got the clippers out. And really? Went there. Went the hair. <laughs> so we're talking to Justin Fields today. Did he lose his marbles? Uh, I still hear about it from my wife. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know. So we're talking to Justin Fields today, and he was asked about his where his kind of old school mentality comes from. Mm-hmm. He says, I get it from my dad. Okay. So Makes sense. Said, well, how, did you, how did your dad instill that? And he says, well, my dad was a military guy. He was, you know, police, I, I think he's a military police, background. Yeah, right? policeman, you know, mm-hmm. you know, police officer and all that stuff. He said, my dad's an old school, like straight line kind of guy. And said, in fact, he shaved my head in high school. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I was, wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing in class. And I, I was getting a C and... He shaved my head. You and Mr. Fields, man. Me and Mr. Fields were like this. <laughs> and he said it, that wasn't the only time it happened. He said that was in sixth grade. He did had to do it again in eighth grade. I'm, and wow. I'm, so when we got we got done, Justin walked away from the podium. And I walked over to him. I said, hey, you just vindicated me <laughs> with my family because I still hear clip. about this, that I'm this horrible father because I, I, I cut my kid's hair off because he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, you learn from those things. I'm like, you absolutely <laughs> I do. I would think you would, right. <laughs> Especially if you have longer hair and it doesn't grow back you like quick. like the hair, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. And it took us a while. That's awesome. <laughs> Very cool. So he's in good spirits, I assume, yeah. and preparing as if he's a starter like it's any other week and all that good stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't change his preparation or anything he's doing, you know, with Wilson being out there. But great that Wilson is full go and feeling great. Yeah, I, I did, you know, did want to note, like – some of the stuff that they want to do offensively, mm-hmm. um, you know, they just haven't been able to do it because they haven't hit some of those passes down the field and stuff like that. Right, it, right. It, it wasn't there. And, and he was talking about that today and asked about it. He said, yeah, we need to hit some of those, you know, especially we took some shots early in the game and, and you know, we're six inches away from, from the pass to Connor and some of the other stuff. And I, and I asked him, like, well, you know, that's a – wouldn't that open up your running game a little bit more? You know, just to, if you if you ba- you're going to back the safeties off at the very oh, least if yeah. that happens. Here's the problem right now with the Steeler offense. We know Arthur Smith wants to run play action. Mm-hmm. They're running play action at the second highest amount. Yeah, they use a lot. percentage in the NFL right yep. now. The problem is they're averaging right now 4.3 yards per pass attempt. On in play, play action. action. On play action. That's not going to cut it at all. No. Right. I mean, most, I mean, over like the last five years, this isn't the exact numbers, but the league averages, I think, like two yards more when using play action yeah. per pass than normal. It's right around that number. You know, I mean, not two yards less. Not which two is yards what they're doing less. Here. Right, right, right. I mean, I don't know why that is. I do know Fields has a somewhat longer time time to throw, which is his style, and it's also a run-around quarterback thing, takes a little longer. I mean, is that part of the process? Are people getting home and disrupting throwing lanes more during play action? Are they not honoring it because the Steelers aren't running as well? I don't know. Um, I saw some disturbing numbers about stacked boxes, though. I mean, that they're, they led the league this past week in running percentage of runs into stacked boxes. You know, and like, it's obvious. I mean, and it's obvious. Not, there's, no, there's nowhere, there's to, go, nowhere right? to go. You can block it up. There's too many defenders. Yeah, you know, right. So I, I looked this up. Um, over his career, Russell Wilson has averaged 8.4 yards per pass attempt on play action. He's always been very good at it, including 8.6 yards last season. 
Okay. Use, utilizing play action. Again, on a pretty bad offense. On I mean, a pretty it wasn't bad a Derrick Henry led yeah. offense or, you know, right. And, you know, these. You are, don't even have to run the ball well to make play action work. No. You know I mean, but you, <laughs> you have know. to be willing to make those throws. I mean, yeah. some of them are going to be tight throws, but you mm-hmm. have to be able to split the safeties and those kind of things sure. against play action. You have to. You have to be willing to throw in the middle of the field. Mm hmm. And I mean, play action affects linebackers, doesn't affect corners. Right. I mean, corners aren't biting. They're not, their eyes aren't in the back. You're trying to anyway. suck right. the linebackers in to open up the middle of the field. Yep. Uh, absolutely. Even one step goes a long way, you know, or a hesitation. And to me, right now, I mean, that's. Again, that would go a long way if you get that portion going. Let me just say this again. This season, the Steelers are averaging 4.3 yards per pass attempt on play action. Last season, Wilson averaged 8.6 yards per pass attempt on play action. Now, I am no mathematician, right. but that would be twice as much. Twice as much <laughs> for a team that uses play action more than all but one. Yes. So multiply that times the two. I mean, it's that's a lot of yardage you're leaving on the field. So when people get angry, and again, this is not a knock on Justin Fields. No, right, right. I bet his play action numbers are better throughout his career than they are right now, too. I don't know. I'm, I'm totally I, I guessing. I don't know. I, I'd have Maybe to look, he doesn't yeah. sell it well. I don't know what the um, – But the fact remains that Russell Wilson's good at it. We do know that, yes. We know that. That's That's been proven as a fact time and again. There's a decade of history to show us that. Yeah. You're right. That's why they brought him here. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, why they, that's why they made us a concerted effort and pitch to Russell Wilson mm-hmm. after hiring Arthur Smith to bring in Wilson as their quarterback. Yeah. They, I think, for example – both these quarterbacks don't work out, and Coach Smith is back, and they have a complete blank canvas of what they're looking for in the quarterback market. I can promise you that guy's going to be able to move. You know, He's not going to be a statue. He doesn't have to be as athletic as Fields, but he'll be Wilson or better at this yeah. stage of his career. That I 100% agree with. He'll be a good deep passer, and he's going to be a play-action style quarterback. You know, there's Burrow. Ben didn't like play action. Some quarterbacks just don't some want to turn the back to the defense. Some guys don't want to turn the back to the defense. They don't want to waste the extra time. They just want to read it out. Well, whoever it is is going to be good at those three things. Yeah. <laughs> and you might have him on the roster. Right. You, you might you know have I mean? him right, sitting right. there waiting to come back. Uh, to me, that, you know, again, the, the conversation we had yesterday about the Graziano with the Graziano stuff. And, mm-hmm. Like, I've not heard any of that inside the building. No, all right. I don't but I know this stuff. And mm-hmm. I know what how how this all went down. Yep. And so uh, again, it's, this is not a knock on Justin Fields at all. I like Justin Fields. I think people think we're this is like a lobbying session for Russell Wilson. It's not at all. It's just a trying to get in the the head of the decision makers. And what if we were in those shoes? What would we do? You know. Yeah. He also throws a lot of touchdown passes. Throws touchdown passes. Kind of short on that again. 20 touchdown passes in the red zone last year. In the red zone, right. You are allowed to throw the ball into the end zone. Into the end zone, yeah. It's alarming how few end zone targets Fryermuth has. He doesn't have any. He He has has no targets in the end zone. Yep. But he leads the team with two touchdown catches. Exactly. It's easier if you catch it on the the other side of the stripe. Yeah, and you don't have to run it in and take a big (laughs) hit at the goal line. Yep. And yeah. they have big go up and get it guys, you know, in Washington and Pickens. And I know Pickens has some, but you need to get more. You know? Yeah. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah. Uh, but Wilson is is getting closer and closer every day. I think today was a big hurdle to get through that first day yesterday and mm-hmm. then get into today and feel good and be able to get out there and yeah. and do everything. Yeah. And next step is taking hits and all that kind of stuff too. But Got to get on the field for that first. You only you know? take the hits in the games. In the game, right. You know, so. I'm excited to see him. Again, I've been impressed with Fields. He's outkicked my expectations for sure. Yeah. And, again, that doesn't mean that Fields can't be in your long-term plans. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it doesn't even mean, short-term for a series or two. Right. You know, right. doesn't mean that he, he could still be your quarterback next year. Mm-hmm. And you say, okay, well, we now know what he can and can't do. Let's Where design, a, improve, let's design yeah. an offense around him. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100 percent and that's and we'll get a backup that's very similar yeah and you know that type of thing yeah right, right all those things very much could be in the cards so you know I, I just think that's something that that Steeler fans need to remember they need mm-hmm. to remember how this whole thing started and took place there's a well thought out plan yeah they I mean, went and acquired Wilson and told Pickett hey you're gonna be he's going to be in pole position and Pickett said yeah I don't want that Mm. I, I believe I should be the, the starter. I was. I'm the incumbent starter, and they said, "Okay." You, he well, said, "I want if I'm, that way, yeah. if I'm not the starter, I want out of here." All right, and then you're out of here. Right. You're out of here, and yep. then they went and acquired Justin Fields. And 
Wilson could be the starter this week, five weeks from now, whatever, and look old and shot. I mean, that's, that's possible. a possibility. Right. Yeah. I mean, these guys don't last forever. Who knows? But I want to see it. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like Cam Hayward, the situation with Cam Hayward. Right. Coming into this year. You know, I felt confident. I in felt him, but, more right. confident in it than you did. Yeah. But you had questions about it. I had questions. I'm like, man, he had a really rough year. He's up in age. I mean, he, he had a rough year because of injuries. I mean, yeah. he probably shouldn't have been out there. It's not even fair to his legacy to have that tape out there. Not that it was bad, but it wasn't his levels. It didn't look like him. And they didn't ask anything of him since then. You know, he's not going to play in the preseason. You know, he's not going to go crazy in camp. And he's been outstanding. He's the number one defensive tackle in pro football focuses. Is he? Number one. I say he's been maybe the best player on this team, including what? I mean, yeah. like he's been that he's good. He's been good against the run. He's been good, you know, rushing yep. the passer. Just good. Yeah. Hundred percent, and he's got a good matchup this week. And he's the same age as Russell Wilson. True, true, yes. So and his position is more physically demanding. Yeah, people, you know, immediately I'll I'll look at the comments in this and, and well, how, you know, old Russ, we can't put old Russ out there. He's there are plenty of quarterbacks. One of them who's older than Russell Wilson just threw for five hundred yards last week. Yeah, exact same draft class. Same draft class, yep, but like four months, months older. Yep. And he threw for 500 yards last week. Yep. And veteran, experienced quarterbacks are, I mean, the Flacco's of the world are doing just fine. There's another one. I mean, Dak's a little younger than those guys, but he's been around the block a long time. He's 31. Right, right. I mean, these guys are up in age and don't move like they used to or any of that, and they're still highly, highly effective. Because they've they've evolved over the over the years. And, and also, I think today's league, in some ways, today's league's bad for old Russ because – he used to be a putter or a driver, you know. Yeah. I mean, and they were taking the drivers away. We're not allowing any big plays. Cover two, but if he evolves, which I'm certain he realizes he has to, he can nickel and dime these cover two base defenses, oh. just Rita's, like Cousins Rita's and Flacco. Line of and scrimmage, and nowhere right, to go right, with the right, football. Right. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm sure Ben's looking at this like, man, if you're going to play the same coverages over and over, I could still be out there completing passes. Yeah. You know? Let me just add what Tony Dungy had to say. Um, and of course, Tony was at Thursday's practice for the Steelers and, mm. and Friday, for, you know, in town for the, the Sunday night football stuff. And he said, I was at practice on Thursday and I watched Russell Wilson throw the ball. And there were some plays that he made throwing the football, working as the scout team mm-hmm. quarterback, where he was doing it against the Steelers' first team defense. And it's like, wow. He's ripping up his first team defense. Yeah. 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 He's yeah. like, that's some high level passing there. Mm-hmm. That's Tony Dungy saying that. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it's odd that he's actually running scout team considering his background, you know, but... Got to get him some throws somewhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, what do you think Mahomes did as a rookie? And then everyone looked around like, why aren't we playing him? We, yeah, we can't, we can't defend this guy. <laughs> right. He's tearing us up. Right. So, anyways, let's get to a break. He is the Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. Matt and I will be back with more right after this. Welcome back. I am Dale Lally. He is... The Matt Williamson and uh, Matt, um, there's a lot of different things out there ranking rookies and things of that nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I want to take a look here at Pro Football Focus's rookie rankings because they don't just rank the skill position players, which is often what happens yeah, when, yeah, yeah. when people rank. Of course. I get it. They're the guys catching the footballs, throwing the footballs, doing all that, you know. And it's easier to rank them. You have stats right. to back them up. Right. And right. You got to really grind the tape to do more than that. And I, I want to do that this week in particular because I think two of the best rookies in the league are going to be on the same field. I was about to say, that's what I was looking up here, is Mr. Bowers is, <laughs> he has 313 receiving yards over his first five games. That's the second most since two thousand. Since 2000 for a tight end. I mean, that's a heck of a start. And amongst rookies at any position, all these great receivers, neighbors, Harrison, he's second in receptions and third in receiving yards. Yeah, yeah He's a force. He's a handful. Yeah, he is. He's a handful, and the Steelers are going to have to deal with that. So I'm looking here at the Pro Football Focus uh, rookie rankings. They rank the top 15 guys, uh, regardless of position. Mm-hmm. At 15, they have Dominic Pooney. Yeah, he's been really good guard for, for the San Francisco yep. 49ers. His grade's 73.1. Okay. They're going strictly on the grades. Oh, okay. Get. Now, not you the... and I don't necessarily agree with their grades sure, all the time. Sure, but it's an it's indication. Something. You're yeah. in the ballpark, right? Yeah. At 14 is Jordan Whittington, the wide receiver for the Los Angeles Rams. Okay. He's kind of doing the puka stuff, but 
a lesser version, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah, he's the physical And hasn't guy. played quite as much as some of these other guys. No, but. no. He got thrust in there because they had two injuries. At 13 is Joe Alt. We saw him a couple of weeks yeah. ago uh, playing right tackle for the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, he was tremendous before the Steeler game. Had a rough yeah. game against the Steelers. Got hurt. Has had a bye since then. So, it's he's getting back on the horse this upcoming week. But, great prospect. No, he's, he's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, monster. At 12 is Brian Thomas Jr. with the Jaguars. I'm surprised he's that low. He's been really, really impressive. Clearly their best player on offense this year. Yeah. 11 is Marvin Harrison Jr. with the okay. Cardinals. A little bit of a slow start, and then he blows up in week two, and he's been quite good since. You yeah. Know? Maybe he's not the phenom everyone thought he'd be. I mean, he's like five games into his career, but he's hard to play against already. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. been good. Yeah. Uh, at 10... A guy that we liked in the draft, uh, Andrew Phillips, cornerback with the Giants mm-hmm. out of Kentucky, and he's he's a good player and, yeah. and is a, a valuable slot guy. The year before, they took Banks in the first round, both of whom played pretty well. It's easy to just kind of rag on the on the Giants. Ah, they're a bad team, and the only thing good on their defense is the defensive line. But they're corn. They got a pair of corners now. Yeah, <coughs> nine has been Jared Verse with the uh, Rams. I didn't love him coming out, and I think I kind of learned a scouting lesson with him. Is he's so physical and he's runs power through player, guys, yeah. and that just translates immediately. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you can win with power off the edge, even if the other stuff doesn't come, you're going to be a contributor. Yeah. You know? At eight, another guy who is a kind of a power. He's got more pass rush moves though. Is uh, and the Steelers have seen him. They ought to lay two with the Colts. Mm, okay. And he's a technician as well as a power player. I mean, first defensive player taken. He's pretty NFL ready, too. And that's yeah. a, an extreme description. I mean, few rookies are. Seven is to Vondre Sweat with the Titans. Blows me away. But it, I mean, they're right. He's been a real force for them. I mean, they, they keep them fresh, and Simmons gets most of the doubles. And I sent that type you, of yeah, thing. I sent but, you yeah. the list earlier this week of, the, of their top five graded interior defensive linemen this week. He Hayward, was on it, right? Hayward's number one. He was number four on that list. Just of anyone. Of, yeah. I mean, that includes Chris Jones and Quinn Williams and yeah. Simmons and all those dudes. I mean, there's a lot of good D, D tackles in the league right now. Lawrence. Yeah. With he's him, a force, and, though, yeah. him and Justin Simmons in in the interior of that Tennessee. That's why it's tough to run against them. The big time, yeah. yeah. They have some corners now too with Snead, and you know they, they got the nice bones of a defense from this week or this this off season. They always have those big hogs in the middle. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're always tough to run against. They are. They, they are. just are. I didn't know if that was a Vrabel thing, but I mean, they take two of the they took Latham and Sweat. I mean, you talk about the two <laughs> biggest, nastiest dudes at each of their positions in the first two rounds. Yeah, it's a lot of beef. At six, Malik Neighbors. 100%. He's been I, great. I would say he's probably been the second best. Yeah. I mean, I mean, or if there was rook, second best rookie of the year. I know Frazier's name's going to come up. But, I mean, I think Daniels is running away with the rookie of the year honors. Because he's a quarterback and he'll win it. And, and he will. And yeah. I, I was shocked like Mayfield beat out Barkley that year. But he's a quarterback. He's a quarterback. And, right, yeah. right. And now neighbors missed a game, and it doesn't sound like he's going to play this week either. He's not looking that way. But, I mean, his what he's done has been outstanding. At five is Jaden Daniels. Wow. Let me stop you super quick. Okay. Yesterday we did a mailbag on our podcast, and they asked us, if you were to redraft this wide receiver class, how would you do it? And I said I'd take neighbors over Harrison. Would you, would you do that as well? Knowing what you know now, draft is today. I mean, see, here's the thing, though. And then I drew a line under him. If if they if they switch positions or switch spots, mm-hmm. would be Harrison be having this kind of because he's neighbors is the only game in town. The the targets is insane. The targets I mean, he is like so the tar- all, highest target yeah. share in the league. It's all about opportunity as well. I think his tape's been better though. I mean, the way he moves. I mean, they still were my top two. Yeah, but and they were close to begin with. Yeah, I mean, just having that five games was enough for me to say neighbors was one. I can understand yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jaden Daniels at five. That's surprising. I mean, I wonder where he is on their overall quarterback list because just numbers and all that stuff. Is uh, I can tremendous. see it here. Let's where's he at on here? He is uh, overall grade of eighty one point one. That puts him at 
Mm, I can't read that. It's too small. Uh, he's actually <laughs> he's, he's seventh. Uh, Amongst all quarterbacks. Tied with Daniel Jones, of all people. Jones has not had a bad year. Because you got Malik Neighbors. Uh, that sure helps. And he just leans on him. And of course, goes... they also have Bo Nix at four. So On this list? No, I'm, uh, I'm on quarterbacks. Oh, okay. I was looking it up. I, mean, I just wanted to double check. Well, that's a uh, turnover-worthy uh, play rate. So it's seventh lowest in the league. But his grade okay. of, of 80.1 is very high among quarterbacks. He's number one in EPA. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's right ahead of Burrow. He, does, he doesn't throw right any completions. Allen. That's the thing. Never ball never hurts the ground. <laughs> Neither does Bo Nix, but he doesn't throw for any yards. Yeah, he doesn't make any plays yeah. either. And they also factor in his legs and all that stuff, too, with EPA. Daniel's and been outstanding. He's been ridiculous. I mean, yeah. he had like a 90% completion rate one day. I mean, I think he's number one in completion rate, period. You know. Yeah, it'll be interesting he's this at week. 77% completion rate. They're playing the Ravens this week. I wonder Baltimore. if he comes back to earth. I mean, but we just saw Burrow torch that. I mean, everybody's thrown against that Ravens defense. I mean, Daniels and Lamar aren't the same guy, but I know Har. Of course, Harbaugh knows. How does the league try to defend our guy? Well, let's do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what do the Steelers do to right, Lamar? Right, right. They should be watching Steeler Raven yeah. tape and self scout themselves to, to deal with Daniels. Yeah. I, if he gets over this hump, I'll be really impressed. He might throw on them. Yeah, but if they. If he puts 30 on the Ravens, I'll be like, He's a more wow. accurate passer than Lamar. He is. He is. Yeah. There's no question about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's good. He is. He is. And he's very poised. He's very smart. There's a lot to like. At four is safety Evan Williams with the Packers. I wouldn't have known that. I mean, yeah. of all the safeties they brought in, he was the least descript. I mean, McKinney was not a rookie, but he had a – I think he had to pick the first four games of, yeah. of a Packer uniform. And then they had Bullard in the second round. And this dude was kind of an afterthought. But uh, news to me, but I believe you. I'd rather have Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the quarterback always trumps that. At three is Lad McConkey. He's somebody I wanted to talk more about in the fantasy segment, too, or DFS. I think he's ready to blow up like we thought. I mean, he every game got a little better, got a little better. Now is a buy. Herbert's probably a little healthier finally. Yeah. The He's not going to see Sertain this week. True, true, true. They're, they're playing Denver. And, yeah, yeah. No, I think McConkey's set up for a very big second yeah. half this well, season. I mean, I thought, you know, this season he would catch 90-plus passes mm -hmm. and be their number one receiver. It's trending that in that direction. That might be coming, yeah. Yeah. When we redrafted receivers, I took him real high. No, oh, I'll he bet. Was, yeah. <laughs> At two, Zach Frazier. True. I mean – I bet he's in their top three centers. He's number four. Is he four? Okay. And the, and Eric McCoy, who's number one, is hurt. Is hurt. He won't play the rest of the year. I'm going to say Ragnall's coming back. I don't know if he's one of the top ones or he's not. He's like he, eighth. Okay. Somewhere in that, in that range. The only two guys ahead of him right now are Creed Humphrey and er Linderbaum. Hmm. I think they're that's the company we want to be keeping. And he may surpass them. Absolutely. I, I, I mean, there aren't many... I'm not sure if there's any, if I'd trade him for those guys. You know, just because you got a couple more years, I think he's that promising. Like, he might be the best center in the league in three years, yeah. two years, or, you know, battling Humphrey and Linderbaum for the next decade. Like, wow, we had three Hall of Fame centers all at the same time. He, he's that type of player. So the Raiders will do some stuff this week where they'll put five guys along the defensive front mm -hmm. and put Crosby in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as great as Crosby is, he could end up on his back, too, yes. because, just because of the power difference and the leverage difference. Or he might swim him and he might. have a sack. You know, I mean, he's he a, he is a he's, real handful. He's a handful, but Frazier, when he gets his hands on you, yeah, look out. I, I'm sure YouTube is filled with them, but if you search his highlights, it's rare. I mean, it's putting people on their back. Putting that just NFL people players on their back. In the league, right. Yeah. And he moves better than I... I loved him coming out of West Virginia, but I didn't think he moved as well as he has here. Thought there's a little more stiffness than I, than he truly has. He's the whole package. Yeah, no, he's he's been great, and mm -hmm. he's only going to continue to get better. Um, he's he's a handful. Yeah, I thought McCormick was really good this past week too. Yeah, and that leaves number one, Brock Bowers, who the huh. Steelers will see this week. Wow. So the top two, according to Pro Football Focus, the top two rookies in the NFL to Square this point enough. are playing this week. Passes a sniff test. I mean, 
it's a slightly disrespectful to Daniels. I mean, but they're just going off grades. They're not talking about who they their rookie of the year would be. Right. Um, I think those two have been Pro Bowl caliber players. I mean, how many how many how many tight ends are having a better year than Bowers? Maybe none. Maybe none. Maybe overall. none. Right. Yeah, because I mean, there's been guys hurt. There's been guys in, you know yeah. just haven't done much that you you look Kelsey's at. Kelsey's stepping up, but he started real slow. You know, I mean, Kittle's been on on and off the field. Goddard was great, but only for like two or three games. You know, yeah. and had a Bowers bias. has had uh, you know an up and down a little been, bit. Uh, you know, one g- game here or there that haven't been great, but mm-hmm. again, but the opportunity is there, especially with Devontae Adams out. Yeah. The Steelers have better figure out how they're going to handle this guy. Yeah. He's because he's all over the place. Targets and targets. Yeah. Right. I mean, him and Myers get all the targets. They would, they would prefer he got all the targets and they'll move them all over the place and he'll block. I mean, he, he he's blocks and his run after the catch for a tight end is phenomenal. Kelsey like. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, young Kelsey like working his way down mm-hmm. through the through the defense. Um, they'll get him the football. It's not even a a, a a a deep depth of target. No, it's low. It's like five and a half yards downfield. And yet, but he, some of them's because they throw him bubble screens behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. you know, because they just want to get him in his hands, and he still gets eight. You know, so that's I mean, that's definitely something that the Steelers are going to have to be very cognizant of this week. Oh yeah. Um, where's he at? Where's he? he he's he lines up in the backfield. Mm-hmm. He lines up in line. He lines up in the slot about yeah. half the time, and then out wide uh, between his sl- his out wide stuff and his in line stuff. It's about fifty percent. He's I think he's taken three snaps in the backfield mm-hmm. this year, but that's a great way to free him up. As we the Steelers did it last week with Connor Hayward. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the pass down the sideline yeah. was was a wheel route out of the backfield. I don't know if he has any carries as a Raider, but in Georgia, they'd give him jet sweeps. You know, like you know, Darnell you Washington. See, yeah, yeah, Darnell Washington sealing the edge for him, and you know, Georgia tight ends. You know, so no, he's going to be a phenomenal player, and he already is. Yeah, he's dangerous. So you know th- th- that's something. And he can get downfield. And he can get yeah, downfield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you don't you don't want to you know, start biting too hard on all the mm-hmm. the short stuff, and then all of a sudden he's running behind you because this kid can run too. Yeah, I don't want a linebacker on him. No, because he'll 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 toast him, and he beats up on corners physically. I mean, and there aren't many safeties that are similar builds or you know able to deal with them. I think Elliott will get the bulk of the work, but it's going to be a you know massive. Project for all. Yeah. It's almost, you almost prefer for them to put him in the slot. Maybe. Just because, okay, now we don't need to have more Beanie, bodies around. We don't him, have yeah. to have Beanie Bishop on the field. I, say, I don't want Bishop on that's, him. That's not going to work. Right. I mean, I wonder how they handle that. It's not like they have three great receivers. You know, like, I wonder if Mayer plays is one thing. You know, he he it has doesn't not look, been doesn't look good at around. All. I don't know what's going on with him, but he yeah. has not been. He's missing for personal reasons, mm-hmm. and, so, and I hope it's not anything that's right. We don't know. know the answer. I hope he's fine. But um, side note: their practice report Ooh, was not baby. so great. It was ugly. In fact, we <laughs> yeah, haven't right. gone over that. Let's let's do yeah, that here real quick before because we're going to be different time zone. We probably won't get today's. Yeah, but um, it's ugly. Let me find that here. Uh, Where did I send? I sent that to you and Bob last night when I got it because I got it late. Yeah, yeah. You texted us. Um, and I'm like, this looks actually. While you're looking for it, I got though. it here. Okay. And one thing I was thinking about though is, how do I get Beanie Bishop on the field if I'm them? Probably need three wide receivers, and they don't have three good wide receivers. Yeah. You know, like uh, it'd be different if Adams was in the mix. You right. Know? Oh, they would be much different. Yeah. It'd be much more tough, uh, difficult to. So Devontae Adams did not participate yesterday. He's not playing in this game. I don't think he ever will. Max Crosby with an ankle. He missed a game two weeks ago, came back last week. He didn't participate uh, because of that ankle injury yesterday, but he's going to play. He Yeah, he had two sacks last week, but he's yeah. playing injured. Uh, linebacker Divine Diablo with the oblique injury was a full participant. Linebacker Tommy Eichenberg with the hamstring was limited. Michael Mayer with the personal did not uh, participate. Wide receiver Tyreek uh, McAllister with the shoulder was limited. Wide receiver Jacoby Myers with an ankle injury was li- uh, did not participate. That would be massive. I mean, yeah. he's their second most important guy yeah, and, and second best skill guy. Left tackle Colton Miller with knee and shoulder issues did not participate. You don't like hearing two things. No, I mean, that's he, not good. I was going to say that Myers is their second most important offensive player, but he isn't. Miller's their second most important yeah. player, if not number one. Uh, safety Trevon Morig with the knee full participant. Offensive tackle Thayer Munford with knee and ankle issues limited. I didn't 
I thought there was a pretty slim chance he was going to play. Yeah. Even if he does play, he's going to be limited mm-hmm. going against T.J. Watt. Now, Glaze is fresh fish. You know, oh. Like, oh, but Mumford's not like he's a great right tackle. No, either. it's not like, yeah, right, he's right. not uh, yeah. going to confuse. It's not Penny Sewell, you yeah. know, right. Uh, guard Dylan Parham with an Achilles was limited. I assume Powers Johnson would be his replacement. Well, Powers Johnson with a knee did not participate. Okay, because... I, I, I keep telling myself I need to figure out what the story is there because Powers Johnson has to be better than Whitehair. I mean, Whitehair, the left guard, has not been good for a couple of years. Apparently he's dealing with a knee issue. In- so maybe injury. Powers Johnson's got issues. Um, I think he had some sort of medical red flag coming out. There were too. some stuff yeah. there, yeah. And I thought it was a knee. Uh, cornerback uh, Richardson, I don't know the first name no, here. That is. Uh, hamstring limited. Wide receiver DJ Turner, hamstring limited. The three yeah. wide receivers. Yeah, just Four, cluster. actually, counting Adams. Counting Adams. Just cluster injuries, as we know, are really hard to overcome. Running back Zamir White with Mayor's a groin. is really important for them. I he think is. If he could yeah. somehow get back for this. Uh, Zamir White with a groin injury did not participate. He missed last week's game. He's not great, but he's our best back. And then safety Trey Taylor with a knee was limited. Okay. So they've got yeah. some issues there. Offensive line and wide receiver. They both offensive tackles. You know, starters, wide receiver clumps. Two starting guards. Two starting guards, too. Yeah, wow, okay. None of them sound awful. You know, none of them been ruled out, but. Except for Adams. Yeah, <laughs> that would be nice, all right. Yeah, no, so. They're not so, in great shape. Uh, we'll see what that looks like tomorrow. Um, we'll get more of a, a final. We won't have it in time for the show, but we'll mm-hmm. have a Thursday practice report. We'll see how many of those guys. Yeah, we'll be a day behind on shows. But, yeah. I mean, it's still what a better idea. Right? West Coast teams. Yeah. yeah they yeah. get used to that. But I like the uh, the rookie matchup. Yeah. The rookies it's a being big featured, one. right? There's Watch those guys on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Keep an eye on those two uh, very, very promising rookies. Um, they could end up in the Pro Bowl, both of them. You know, like they're playing at Pro Bowl levels. Absolutely. Let's get to a break. He is the Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. Matt and I will be back with more right after this. And welcome back. I am Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson. And uh, this is, of course, the, uh, the Drive on Steelers Nation Radio. And you can hear us here on The Drive from 4 to 6 every uh, Monday through Friday during football season. Of course, we go beyond football season as well. Uh, but uh, you can also download the app and, and uh, the Steelers official mobile app. Watch the show, listen to the show on there. Yeah. And uh, you can watch us on YouTube as well. That's kind of a, a new adventure this year. Yeah. Something Thanks we're to our trying buddy out Tyler here. over there. Absolutely. Right. So, Matt, I was mentioning the, the Brock Bowers stuff. Mm-hmm. He leads all rookie tight ends and is 15th among all pass catchers on third down conversions. Ah. That's he has 15, 15 of his 28 catches have come on third downs, and he's okay. com- he's converted those 15 into first downs. Yeah. I mean, that's probably going to be his career. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, on third down, we're going to this dude, money down. We can use him in so many different ways. Even if he's short of the sticks, he still might get it. You know, I mean, he can uh, turn around in the in the zone and, and post up and be big, and, you know, he's going to be red alert on third downs. So how about this little stat, though? Opposing tight ends have been targeted 22 times against the Steelers Mm -hmm. on third downs. They've allowed seven conversions to tight ends, Hmm. 22%. That is second best in the NFL. Wow. Okay. I didn't realize the third down stuff, but I'm pretty sure they've been quite good against tight ends overall, too. Yeah. They they have not allowed the tight ends to to blow up against them. Mm -hmm. Um some catches here and there, but they face yeah, yeah. face some good ones. There's some talented ones in Pitts and and Ferguson's good Ferguson. Player. Right, yeah. right, right. He's a challenge, right? Um, if you look at it, uh, for third downs for the Steelers. Uh, Pickens has been pretty good on those things. Um, he's been their most reliable downfield threat, and the Raiders have struggled against deep passes, allowing 28 receptions on throws of 10 or more yards down the field. That's the fourth most in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, when they don't get home, their secondary can get exposed a little bit. I have a feeling, you know, we talk about, we'll often mention the squeaky wheel yeah. situation. I don't know how to think, think about that one, but I would feed him a million targets. I think George Pickens might have a blow-up game this week. Okay, and then everybody will be happy again and water Singing on the bridge. Kumbaya. And, right, right, yeah. right. 
everybody's been asked about it this week. You know, of course. The Pickens stuff. Pickens talked earlier today and really didn't say a whole lot um, in regard to anything that happened, you know, in Sunday's game. Um, but I thought Russell Wilson was asked about it, and he said, hey, look, George's a very talented guy. Very. Um, we need George. We need him to stay involved. And the, and the great thing about George is even when he's – upset about something he stays engaged mm-hmm. he says some guys when they get upset about something they t- they just zone out and they're they're gone mm-hmm. he said george is a guy that that doesn't do that he's a competitor he's out there he's, he's he wants the football he's fighting for you know for the ball and we need to get him the ball basically he's your best playmaker yeah you know uh, and whatever's going on off the field i don't care i mean if, if you're gonna if it's time to beat the raiders Football needs to go to that guy a lot because their corners don't really have an answer for him. And I thought by far he's playing his best football in 2024. And he was impressive his first years. You know, I mean, like, he got the better pass for Tain. You know, I mean, and the numbers didn't necessarily reflect it. Sertain might be defense player of the year this year. He's been unbelievable, and that was his worst game. You know, he got the better at Terrell. This Raiders team doesn't have anybody like that. No. I mean, not no. even close. No, and, and it was kind of the same with, with the Colts and – yeah. He ate the Colts alive. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so you know, I I do think that um, you want to not run into stack boxes. Yeah, and you, you know, go. He needs to get the football. Arthur Smith was asked about it um, because when when George talked this morning, um, he, he said you know he was asked about the fifty nine percent snap share. Yeah. yeah, snap share. He said you know that that was up to you know Arthur and and um, you know I, I just do what I'm told. Yeah. And so Arthur Smith talked today, and he was asked about you know. Pickens, you know, why wasn't he on the field more? And he said, look, we're, you know, um, you usually go week to week with game plans. Obviously, last week we were in limited possession, which they were. Yeah, yeah. Um, He said the big thing was is they wanted to get big against the Cowboys and force the Cowboys to put their big package on the field. Mm -hmm. Which is something we said one week ago. Yeah. Yeah, Because they don't – they only had seven defensive linemen after – Nealon got hurt, you yeah, know, for four spots, and so you know George wasn't in that big package um, mm-hmm. because you know he's not as good a blocker as some of these other guys, and so you know that was that was a big part of it. Yeah, and, and that's I get that it can be frustrating, and Arthur Smith has a history in the fantasy community. Why is this guy on the field? Why isn't Bijan out there a hundred percent of the snaps? You know, like. He does get creative with his personnel usage, and it is very week to week, for better or worse. So a lot of time it works great. Nobody ever complains when it works great, yeah. you know. And if the Steelers are winning big, or if they run eighty plays, maybe it's not even an issue. You know, Pickens is out there still sixty of them or whatever. But it used to make me crazy that early on, and it doesn't seem like it's still the case. The Steelers' twelve package, one back, two tight ends, didn't have Fryermuth in it. Yeah, you know, for a. Good stretch all through preseason and then for the first week or two, I think. He wasn't out there in 12. Now, they used a lot of 13. They used a lot of 11. And Fryermuth was was out. You know, he still played 60%, 70% of the snaps or whatever. And then this game in 12, Pickens wasn't out there. That was that was the package he was missing in. I mean, any other time he was out there. But when they played 12, he only played one snap. And that's a big portion of your snaps. Yeah. All that being said, like... So keep an eye on this week. I mean, yeah. if they're in 12 and he's not out there, I don't know why, you know, but I mean, there's a reason for it. So they, they attempted two passes to Pickens and Fryermuth in the first half. Both went to Pickens. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you that was not the game plan going into that game. I'm sure. Let's not throw the ball to our two best guys. Right. I'm sure that's not how it was de- designed. Yeah. You know, because by the, the by game's end, Pickens had his seven targets. Mm-hmm. And Fryermuth had, I think, four or five by the by the time that game was over. I'm kind of with you. The more we think through it and talk through it, I bet Pickens gets double digit targets in this game, yeah. if not well over. Yeah, you it's know. just okay. You know, let's 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 make sure that this nip this in the bud and mm-hmm. you know, and win games and put up points and it's the idea throw the football down the field. And it's not necessarily always catering to the player, but you're doing what you need to do to win. Mm-hmm. And if that helps you this particular week, win. Okay, I, and I can, I, can, I can even understand because we know, because the quarterbacks have told us, and, and you know, we've, we've also heard it from Arthur Smith, that the game plan 
against Atlanta was to avoid the middle of the field and those two safeties. Mm -hmm. Well, the one thing that we know that Diggs does with the Cowboys is intercept the football. Absolutely. And so I I just wonder how much of it, because Diggs was following Pickens when he was out there. Mm Mm-hmm. How much of that was? We don't want to necessarily go after Stephon Diggs, or not Stephon Diggs. Uh, Stephon Qu- Diggs' brother. Yeah, Quadre Diggs or whatever his name is. I can't. That's not even it either. Um, I should know that too. Now I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, anyway. Too many digs. Yeah. Anyway, you dig? <laughs> um, I dig it the most. But that's the one thing he does is, is jump patterns and, and take the ball away. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just wonder how much of that too was, hey, we, we're we not going to throw as much at George with, with digs on him because we don't want, you know. Mm-hmm. We're not going to play with fire there, but you can't ignore your best receiver. You can't ignore your best receiver. That being said, he did have a drop in that game, too. He did. He did. And, oh, by the way, he lost a fumble that was very costly Colts, yeah. very recently, too, that was can't be ignored. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, that's that hurt them bad. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, you, know, you, you got to be more secure with the football. I also think there's a fine line, and maybe it would be different with Wilson and – how much how much interception avoidance is too much? You know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. what's the fine line there? And I think a lot of it's how the game's going. Yeah. You know, like, when they had to open things up against the Colts, well, I think that went out the window a little bit. But if you can keep it within the, the shell of we're going to avoid their best safeties or their takeaway corner, I get it. But I wonder if it would be the same with Wilson. I get that with Duck. Yeah. I even get that with Pickett. I get it to... A large degree with fields, but I would be less interceptant avoidance. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I think it would be different with Wilson. I assume there. it'd be different with Wilson. Yeah, because you trust the – there's there's more of a trust there with and the to be veteran frank, quarterback. Wilson might not care what you're telling him. Like if you told Ben, don't turn the ball. I'm, just, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to you know, throw right, right, what right. I see is open, and yeah. I'm going to do it. I've been doing this a long time. You know, I don't need you in my ear. Right. Ben never lets somebody take Antonio Brown out of a game. Right, 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 right. Even if he was, and he was doubled all the time, all it didn't time. matter. right. I'm going to throw my guy the ball and trust him to go get the football mm-hmm. because I have that kind of trust in the guy. Yeah, and, and it absolutely seems like there's some immaturity going on with Pickens. No doubt. But he also has a point. <laughs> you know, it, to some degree, like, I'm the best guy. Get me the football. I mean, it's the wide receiver arrogance we've seen our whole life. You yeah. know, like, they all want the ball. Michael Orvin won the ball, you know. It doesn't you mean every time, uh, right. You show me a wide receiver that doesn't have that kind of arrogance. Mm-hmm. And, again, as I said earlier – or earlier in the week, I'll show you a wide receiver is probably not in the league anymore. Yeah, I mean, I reference Larry Fitzgerald all the time. He's the kindest, nicest human being on the planet. But if we went a quarter or two without throwing Larry the ball, he wasn't real fun to be around on the <laughs> sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> and he shouldn't be. You're like, right. I'm better than all these guys. Give me the football. Get me the football. Right. He is Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. That's going to do it for our number one Matt and I will be back with hour number two right after this. And welcome back. <laughs> I am Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson, and this is the hour number two here on Steelers Nation Radio. These days are long for me. My Thursdays are a little crazy. Well, Thursday. Wednesday's actually my crazy. Thursday's my worst day by yeah, far. Yeah, as you said, yeah. Um, just everybody talks and the coordinators talk, and it's just. It's just and then we got to talk. Then we got to talk, and then I go <laughs> home and I got to write more because uh, Five for Friday goes up on Friday, and oftentimes I don't have it completely written. But yep, yep, yep. you know, because uh, I do like to wait and see how things play out during the week. I think we've explained this to people, and I think your life's exactly the same. But I can tell you at 11 a.m. in week 11 on Tuesday. What, what I'm going to be doing. I can yeah. already tell you. right? Yep. And it That's gets a little goes. old. It gets to be Groundhog Week. But, you know, you got to set it all up. And some days just are one after another after another. You know? I usually hit the wall on a season around November, hmm. around mid-November-ish. And then December, you usually get into that playoff-type push. And it's like, okay, now there's some new storylines here. But... but imagine if the team was like the Browns. Oh. or you know, I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... Those seasons, I, I've so I've this is my thirty third season covering the Steelers. I've covered three losing seasons. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy. Those aren't fun. They're not fun, but yeah. they're also not one in fifteen, one in right. sixteen yeah. either. You know, like brutal. Yeah, it's just it's getting blown out every week. Different field. Right? You know, guys are. It's just the the vibe in the locker room is different. Everything has to be brutal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been there. I was employed by one. So let's start with the uh, fantasy football focus here. Rookie doke. Uh, Three Buffalo Bills wide receivers 
limited on Thursday. That would be oh, wow. Curtis Samuel with a toe, Matt Collins with a shoulder, Khalil Shakir with an ankle. They play Monday. Yeah. Shakir is so important to them. Too important. I yeah. mean, he's their man coverage beater. Like, my son, and I've heard a lot of people saying this, should I bench Josh Allen? You know, like, the numbers have been rough the last couple of weeks. And I think it's the receivers. I mean, I think it's this nobody's able to beat man coverage right now. Stingley's just locking guys down against them, and that's what everybody's going to do. Any easier this week against the Jets? Exactly, exactly. And if Shakir's not out there, they don't have a man beater. Coleman's not ready to be that guy. Samuel's a little gimmicky. Kincaid's been flat out disappointing. I thought he'd yeah. do, do more fantasy slash real world, and. I if I were them, I would be very interested in adding Devontae Adams or, and that's or even DeAndre Hopkins. The hot or, rumor now is like, oh, Buffalo's could be the sneaky team to add Devontae they, Adams. I think that would make them that would boost them up a tier. Yeah. You know, I mean they're missing digs. It's the same added. conversation we're having with the, when we talk about him with the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Like makes you a much better team. He's a great player. Yeah. I mean, there's just no way around that. Um Aaron Rodgers with an ankle limited on Thursday, and they're changing play callers. And they're coming from overseas, and it is an extra day on Monday, but there's a lot of change going on in the building, that's for sure. Surprise, surprise, Nathaniel Hackett no longer calling plays for them, though. Yeah, which makes me think that Rodgers maybe doesn't have as much power as everybody thinks, too. You know, that's his guy. But he's He might be fed up with it, though, too. Like, uh, no, this is not what is supposed to be happening here. No, right. I mean, say what you want about Rodgers. He's obviously an odd bird, but he's highly, highly competitive, too, and he wants to win. Yeah. And and he knows how to. And I just want to remind people, when when people trash Russell Wilson's 2022 season, that was a lot of Nathaniel Hackett. (laughs) The number one person to blame in that season of the Denver Broncos didn't last much longer than this. I mean, it's about the time of the year he got fired, right? Yeah. I mean, it was early. Yeah. And it was a disaster. Just awful. Yeah, yeah. Awful. Uh, Tyler Conklin with a hip injury also limited for them on Thursday. Okay. He's fantasy relevant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you hate these Wednesday or these these Monday night ones where it's like, man, I'm hoping he plays because I got nothing else or, you know, my other guy's on a bye. Uh, For the Bengals, Zach Moss with the foot injury was limited on Thursday. Okay. I was thinking he was highly likely not going to play. Again, this could be a situation where he's just running on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they list him as limited. This is not what you wanted to hear, though. Chase Brown with a quad injury added to the injury Ooh, report. Ooh, that's new. Limited. Yes, he was not on the injury report yesterday, which means that was a Wednesday practice injury. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's bad news. I mean, I would imagine they'll throw like crazy if those two are even limited. Yeah. Hmm. I don't even know who their third guy is. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Yeah. Um, I have to keep an eye on that one for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike Gusecki with the hamstring also limited on Thursday for the Bengals. Okay. Any interest in him? Not really. No, me neither. No. Um, Trayvon Diggs was who we were trying to think of before. By the yes, way. yes, 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 yes. Uh, he didn't practice on Thursday because of an ankle injury, uh, nor did Micah Parsons. Okay. I thought Parsons was several weeks. Yeah. Nor did Kirby Joseph. Okay. So they're a little banged up in they the are. Uh, secondary, too, now. Who are they playing again? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't see anything. Oh, they play the Lions. I said they got a tough one. I knew that. Yeah. That's not good. No, I think starting Lions is not a bad idea coming off a bye. Yeah. Don't want to gonna want to hear this one, Matt. Bijan Robinson. Mm, yeah, I did see that. Hamstring limited on Thursday. Yeah. Algier, though, could be, if, if by chance, Robinson sits. Algier Carolina is a, exactly. He's a top ten guy. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that's RB1, just one to right. keep an eye on there. And, and even with him just a little nicked up, I still would like to start our Algier. Yeah, I mean, as a flag. I mean, not as, with his high expectations, but if he's in your lineup on a, you'll be okay. Yeah, just you know, as a, as a cheaper option mm-hmm. um, with with Bijan, because they've shown if, if Bijan's a little nicked up. Yeah. They'll give the ball to Algier. They don't oh, care. yeah, they yeah. love him, too. I mean, everyone gave Arthur Smith a hard time for that. Well, maybe this coaching staff thinks he's good, too. I mean, right, yeah. He's a good back. Uh, Darnell Mooney with a knee was limited again on Thursday. That's a new one, right? 
Uh, it's the second consecutive day. Yeah, he's been yeah. Limited. I didn't know anything about it. I thought I didn't know if he got hurt yesterday or what the story was there. He's in the hot waiver wire pickup. Yeah, but maybe you know I'd be I'd be cautious of it. Keep an eye on Ray Ray McLeod again. If yeah, Mo- if Mooney yeah. doesn't play, somebody's got to pick up the slack. And if Pitts is not going to be a volume hog. No, you know, London set up real well. Austin Eckelar with a heel injury practiced in full on Thursday. Yeah, I'd put him right back in your lineup. Yeah, I mean, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fan. Uh, Malik Neighbors with the concussion did not practice yeah, say, on Thursday. That happen. doesn't sound good at all. This is a long stretch. Yeah. I mean, it's because it was a Thursday before. I mean, he, got, he injured it on a Thursday night. You so firing it's been up a lot Slayton of days. again? You have to, but I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. Another one to keep an eye on for uh, DFS. Yeah, stuff. it's more of a DFS problem. Um, but yeah, yeah. Slayton. Uh, had a nice game last week. And, mm, he's a good player. Yeah. Uh, Michael Pittman, with a back injury, did not practice again on Thursday. I think he may miss a couple games. Yeah. And they're Richardson con- Richardson practiced in full. They're considering putting him on injured reserve. That's what I heard, right. So, now, remember, against the Steelers last year, he suffered a broken bone in his back. Oh, yeah. On the hit from KZ. Mm-hmm. And he, I think he played through that. If he's out and Richardson's in... Are you interested in downs? No. Obviously, if Flacco's in, you yes. fire him up to you know the nth degree. Does Pierce benefit? Pierce had kind of had a good year. Yeah. And how much of Richardson hurts Pierce? No, not at all. Right. I mean, yeah. he's the chuck and They're still going to take, a, still right, gonna right. take their shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just curious what to do with those pass catchers with Pittman out. Because it leaves a big void. I avoid it if I can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not ideal. I mean, unless Flacco's in. Unless Flacco's yeah, in. Flacco and the downs would be great. So Jonathan Taylor sounds like he is more optimistic he plays this week. Mm -hmm. But Trey Sermon with that collarbone injury that had him limited yesterday was back as a full participant today. So I meant to say this yesterday. Like, how do you – how's a collarbone – it's either broke or it's not, right? Maybe he took a helmet on it or something. I don't know. I mean, it's just a bad bone bruise or something. Perhaps, yeah. I hate talking injuries. I don't know anything. I just know it's the easiest bone in your body to break. Yeah. And you never have anyone, like, limited with a collarbone. You yeah, that's not broken, one you like to see. Yeah. Right. You either have a broken collarbone or you don't. Unless he had, you know, unless it was, like, an AC joint or something. Yeah. They're calling maybe, it a collarbone. Maybe it's I don't something know. in that area. Yeah. I don't know. Huge yeah. bruise. I don't know. Um, but that's definitely one to keep an eye on because he actually caught a bunch of passes last week. Now mm-hmm. it was with Flacco again. But Goodson's the third guy. There's a chance he gets involved, but you hope you don't get to that point. But I don't trust Richardson to complete passes to the running backs. No. But if Taylor's in, you fire him up. Yeah, if Taylor plays, you play him. But I don't know if you play Sermon this say, week. What, that's my next question was if Sermon's in and Taylor's out. Especially and against Tennessee. In. Yeah, it's going to be tough sledding in the middle, too. Yeah. And now Richardson take, eats into your running workload, right. too. And then there's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Boy, there's a lot of moving parts in Indy right now. Absolutely. Uh, Alvin Kamara with hip and hand issues back at practice on Thursday after sitting out yesterday. They figured to lean heavily on their running game with Spencer Rattler in there. Mm-hmm. But I don't know that I can – I mean, you're not going to bench Alvin Kamara. I was sitting there thinking, does he get a lot more passes because they're easy throws for the for Rattler? I mean, you don't bench him. But, but certainly it, the – the you know, Tampa Bay knows that as well. Like, right. And I'm just sitting here thinking, Tampa's without their center and Via Vea is going to dominate the, the middle Saints of the – You mean the Saints are – yeah. Yeah, the Saints without are without McCoy. the center, yeah. without McCoy. Yeah, and – Vita Vea is going to be unblockable in the middle. Yeah. Interior running game is not going to be existent for the rookie. And I'm just thinking, how can you help him at all? Dump off to Kamara, I guess. You I mean, know, I just tell Levante David, you got Kamara. Right, right, right. Where he goes, you go, and just eat that up. Are you starting like a Lave? No. I don't think. I benched him. This, I have him in our league, yeah. and I benched him. I'm like, I can't, I can't, I got to see it now before right. I, I put him out there. I think Kamara's the only one you consider. Yeah. For fantasy reasons, if Hill comes back, are you interested? Does perhaps. he get more quarterback stuff? Yeah, perhaps. But as a tight I end, I, I don't mean. think he's back this week. I don't think he's back either, right? But I think he will during the Rattler run. Yeah, because this is multiple weeks now with. Uh, no car might be a month. Yeah, yeah. They did not go on IR though. I don't think. No, but they said it's a tear. Yeah, not a uh, a okay. strain. A strain and tear are the same thing, basically. Mm-hmm. But still, I mean, when they say it's a tear, that means it's probably a, multiple weeks. A, a severe more severe issue than a strain. Mm -hmm. Luke Musgrave with the ankle injury is going going to injured reserve. Yeah, I saw that. 
So Tucker Craft. He's real. Fire him up. He's absolutely real. I think he's. I might have him ahead of like the Fryermuth level. You mean like I think he might be real high on my tight end ranks right now. Yeah. yeah he's a good player and a good offense. And Love throws touchdown passes. Yeah. Right. Right. That's. There's not many. Maybe ten guys I'd start ahead of him at most. Yeah. At most. No, he's he's going to be. Uh, well, he was a hot waiver wire pickup before, and now it's going to carry yeah, on for yeah. another four weeks. If, if he's still out there, you're crazy not to pick him up. Yeah. But even if you don't need one. Uh, David and Joku practiced today. And plans to play on Sunday. Guess that's good. The quarterback is I don't crippling, trust though, right? I don't trust it at all. Like, do you start Amari Cooper anymore? Do you start Najoku anymore? I want nothing to do with that team at all. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm going to start Jerome Ford this week, mm-hmm. just because he catch. He's catching like six passes a game. Yeah, yeah. That's all they can do. That's all they can do. They don't protect. He does not hold the ball. He wants nothing to do with contact. He's not. They're not picking up blitz as well. It's bad. It's bad, and bad quarterback play. Bad, too. Uh, I mentioned Ekelar. Well, Brian Robinson did not practice today. Okay. McNichols. Yeah. I think Ekelar gets such a boost, though, because I don't think they'll run on Baltimore. I don't think they will either. That's the problem. I think Ekelar catches a lot of passes. Unless, as we talked about, Baltimore says, you know what, we're going to defend this like Pittsburgh defends Lamar. Mm-hmm. So we're not going to allow Jade Daniels to get out on the edge. Mm-hmm. But we're also going to – we'll give up some running up the middle. Yeah, the van noise of the we'll world. We'll give up four, We'll give up four yards doing that as opposed to eight or ten or 50 or whatever Jaden Daniels could do beating us to the outside. Yeah, possibly, possibly. But I think if Robinson – if Robinson does play, I wouldn't have been excited to start. No, I wouldn't I have mean, been he's either. the interior banger, yeah. and I just don't see that going well. But I can see it being an Eckler game. Yeah. I don't think I'm starting McNichols without Robinson, though. No, I don't think so either. Yeah, yeah, not a great matchup. Uh, Rashad Bateman back at practice. He's going to. He's dealing with a groin issue on Thursday. Uh, he was back. He's. Um, I'm not even sure he should be in leagues, but <laughs> I mean, they play the Colers and all these other dudes. Their pass catchers suffer. How about this one, Matt? Joe Mixon. Back at practice on Thursday. Yeah, that's great news Finally. for them. They really need him. Been out since week two. Their run game's been bad. Their first down offense has been bad. And they're just asking too much of Stroud. And now without Nico, it gets a little harder. So yeah. they need to be more balanced. But I would fire him right back up in your lineup. Oh, he has, yeah. to, he has to. I mean, the way he was playing before the injury was like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because you have to respect their passing game. Yeah. Oh, which yeah. tells you a little about where Akers is at right now. I would say he's... It's not good enough. Yeah, he's just toast. Yeah, against light boxes. Um, I'm just looking here. Oh, Jalen McMillan was limited on Wednesday. Hmm. Um, he he's a three. Done, yeah, but he's, he, he hasn't done, done a whole he's lot. Not real fantasy relevant, but he's a three. Uh, Trey Palmer for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did not practice on Wednesday. Okay, I assume. He's dealing with a concussion, so. Uh, then he probably won't play. Yeah. Um, Rashad White for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. has a foot issue. He was limited on Wednesday as well. We're getting the Wednesday information out of them because they had to go to New Orleans mm-hmm. uh, because of the hurricane. Is that good for them, though? I mean, they traveled a while ago, but they're probably in a weird location, obviously. I don't know where they're practicing. I don't probably know either. some college or where yeah. they're staying and all that stuff, too. I mean, I think, the, I, think I saw something where the Buccaneers like took the – the players' families is too. Did they really? There. Yeah. I mean, I guess this one everybody out of the city is. So uh, in in that possible. respect, you're not worried about what you're. You know, you're not making phone calls constantly. Okay, yeah, what's, what right. are the kids? Where you know what's going on? I say, does this help you win a game or hurt you win a game? It can't help, but I mean, it's Spencer Rattler could. <laughs> yeah, I'm still taking the box. <laughs> yeah, but if White doesn't play or is limited, oh, fire up the rook. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, Bucky Irving could become a uh, oh, hot commodity. Could... Yeah, he and could. he was taking that over anyway. I say he may just grab the job for good too. Yeah, I mean if you could, I might put a trade offer in for him if you could right now. You could probably get him reasonably cheap, and you maybe not next week. Yeah, maybe not because I would expect it. You know, again, White will probably always be the third down back. Yeah, he'll be the. But how how much third down? Or if they're winning this game, right? I mean, that might be bunch. ten snaps. It might yeah. be fifteen snaps. Right. So that's just something to keep an eye on. Um, mentioned for the Raiders, uh, no Zamir White. And uh, no Jacoby Myers. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that would be 
brutal for them. They're short on playmakers. Uh, Rashid Shahid with a hip injury mispracticed. I don't think we could have started him either. Yeah. Kind of like Alave. Alave's off the injury report with that hamstring that mm-hmm. he'd been on there for a while, but I mean, again, I, I don't, I don't I think you could do better with the quarterbacks. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that you can play those guys. Yeah, and Taysom Hill still sideline with that rib issue, so mm. he would have been a nice gimmicky kind of guy. To Saints use. are a mess right now. Yeah, they could be losing their their playoff hopes might be circling the drain. And this, folks, is why this silly talk about trading Russell Wilson or releasing him or doing anything like that. Mm-hmm. You don't want to get left short at quarterback. You just no, can't. No, I mean, even like last year, having Rudolph was important, it was real important. Won three big games right. where they got you into the playoffs. Yeah, and that was your three at the time. Yeah. You know, which backup quarterbacks are more important than yeah. ever. These teams that short themselves at quarterback like that, I, I just don't get it. Yeah. I mean, I understand, like, drafting Rattler. But I don't understand not having somebody that's been around the block, you know, the Case Keenum types of the world that have made a living doing that. Those guys are going to be more valuable than usual. Absolutely. I mean, just look at what happened, you know, with Kyle Allen coming off the bench the other day for one or two plays. It yeah. looked like he belonged, you know. Yeah, he yeah. came in and completed the pass. In fact, Wilson said today when he when Russell Wilson was talking, he said that gave us such a boost that play. And yeah, we, we went down and scored. You know, Justin goes back in the game. We go down and we score after that. It was like, hey, look, there's you know, just the fact that they're not afraid of him coming in and throwing a f- a, the football. You know, yeah. Like the whole world doesn't know that he's just going to hand it off, hand it off, hand it off, punt, you know. Right. Yeah, you, that, that could have been the situation there if you don't yeah. trust your backup quarterback. And in a lot of a lot of places, we saw it on, with the Saints on, on uh, what was that, Sunday or Monday night, mm-hmm. uh, whatever night that, that was. That was Monday. It. Monday. Chiefs. They bring in Honer, Herner, or Herner. Is. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, now you got they, me right, doing right. They bring in Herner into the game. And he couldn't complete a pass. Couldn't complete a pass. And they needed him to throw. Yeah. And right. And he can't complete a pass. And he was right. number two over Rattler just because he's more experienced, just but he's not more much trained. more. But if you give him a whole week to prepare, they want Rattler. Yeah. Because you know, he's a better passer. He's got more ability, you know. And that's supposed to be their, their in game go to guy. Like, that's need, their fallback we, option, yeah. right. That's that's the the flaw in the plan. Right. Just give me the yeah, you know, give me the Landry Jones. You know, that yeah, give guy, me somebody you know, can step in and complete some passes and run the, the offense. Right, right. Yeah. I don't know. I, th- I think a lot of teams neglect that position too much. I think they do, and it's it's you know, uh, it's if it's five million dollars for a competent backup quarterback, it's mm-hmm. five million dollars well spent. Yeah. If he wins you a game, if he can win, if he can run the majority of the offense and make everyone else. I, mean, I know this is a fantasy segment, but if everyone else do- doesn't doesn't kill your fan, like you can't right. start these guys this week because right. the backup quarterbacks in the game. Exactly. It completely takes a team off the. Ex- off the right. off the docket. Like if your guys and can still be weeks. fantasy relevant, <laughs> then your backup's good enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, if you you have a bye week and you were counting on Alave this week or Shahid this week, you're like, ah, right. I'm stuck. And I'm sure you were. Yeah. There's, there's probably those, people out there yeah, that were. They've had good years and have been or were drafted high, especially Alave, you know. And you're stuck. And you're stuck. Yeah. Two weeks ago it didn't look like that was the case. You know? You're mm-hmm. probably planning out your bye. Well, okay, my bye week's fine. I got Shahid, I'll put him in the lineup and I'll be fine. Yeah. Not now. This is probably too dorky, but I wonder when we draft, should we pay attention to backup quarterbacks a little bit more? Make it even a tiebreaker. Like, if I'm torn between a London and a Lave, well, what happens if Cousins gets hurt? Eh, Penix might be all right. Yeah. But what happens if Carr gets hurt? Oh, no. Yeah. You, you know, my guy's worthless. Definitely I mean, something that— Trust me, as a yeah. Jalen Waddle owner in a lot of places, it's like— I can't play this guy. Look at the, look right. at the Dolphins right now. That's it's what I mean. A, yeah, it's just it's a they're mess. They're the best example. Right? It's a mess because yeah. they, they don't have a good backup quarterback. And then they're manufacturing goofy touches. I mean, throwing everything behind the line of scrimmage just to get completions. Like it's that bad. It, it really is. And you're, I think you're, I think you're right. I think when you're drafting, you should take into account because as I mentioned, I, I counted it, it up from last year. Right. I think it was only like seven or eight quarterbacks played all seventeen games last year. Yeah. I mean, we know in the high sixties. Of quarterbacks start every year now, and just think about it. Well, if, if this guy's out, of them are terrible. What's the backup option look like? Right, right. And, and maybe to you know, when we talked about the Colts two weeks ago, we didn't give the Colts enough credit for signing Flacco. Right, goes a long way. I mean, the Saints have Flacco right now. I'd be like, yeah, they'll be all right. Yeah, they might be better. You know, probably not, but you know, <laughs> the Colts might be. Yeah, right. I mean, definitely, a passing game is absolutely. Let's get to a break. That's going to do it for the Fantasy Football Focus. He is the Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. Let's continue that backup quarterback talk here in a minute. We'll do that right after this. 
Welcome back. I am Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson. And uh, Matt, I wanted to talk about this article a couple weeks ago when it came out, and it wasn't really relevant at the time. Um, but Seth Walter with ESPN ranked the NFL's backup quarterbacks. One oh, okay. To, one to 32. Okay. Some of these situations have already changed. Right. Like Drake May was, was probably yeah. on the list. And, you know, right. So we just talked about the Saints. Yeah. And, you know. I thought we'd just talk about this. That's a, you know, a topic that we just got done talking about with fantasy football. Just to give you an idea of who some of the number two quarterbacks are across the league. I say this every year because there was – it was my least favorite thing in my ESPN career. I was I worked for ESPN.com <laughs> for 10 years, and every year during the down time of the year, after the draft, Matt, rank the 32 backup quarterbacks. Boy, is it alarming because yeah. it's like, these are all so terrible. You know, we're, we're already into the Steelers are going to see a backup quarterback this week against the Raiders. Yeah. They've made a change. Yep. We've seen the Patriots make a change. This is the time of season when you start to see teams make – change yes and some of them when you do those rankings were okay they're just not going to play the first round pick okay you know like yeah. may i you know his day is coming he's gonna be pretty high on the list but then there's like the saint situation or i mean miami where it's like they just don't have anybody yeah as i mentioned seth walter i compiled this at 32 he has clayton tune with the cardinals, cardinals? yeah and they traded for ritter and then they cut him and he's on i mean like they yeah, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. Yeah. Um, he is absolutely nothing like the starter. No, right. I mean, the, the, their season would be totally wrecked. Yeah. 31 is Skylar Thompson. <laughs> and, and <laughs> we're seeing that in action, right? Yeah. It's brutal. It's not good, and they felt so bad about it, they went out and grabbed Tyler Huntley off of, off mm-hmm. of uh, Baltimore's practice squad. Yeah, it's miserable. At 30... Jeff Driscoll with the Commanders. Wow, he's the number two. Again, nothing like the start. Right, absolutely. And not a veteran. This is I, say, I want a big brother. Yeah. You know, I mean, I want a 10-year veteran. What's, yeah, what's Ryan Jaden Daniels, the what's world, Jaden Daniels bouncing off of Jeff Driscoll? Yeah. I mean, Where'd you get those shoes? Yeah, like, he, I know he's been <laughs> in the league for a little while, but he's never really been on the field enough to be like, no. I remember when we did this, you know, yeah. right. You know, the... The left witch, the Gradkowski, I mean, the batch, that guy. You know, that those, goes a long way. Goes a long way for a first round rookie. At 29 is the great Jake Hayner. Yeah. And he really isn't He's the backup, jumped, apparently. Yeah, right, got, right. He's the, he was the game day it, number yeah, two. Exactly. But not now. Not the prep all week guy. 28. I might just roll through some of these guys, mention their name, and you tell me where who they play for. <laughs> when you said Tune, I'm like, I think it's still Arizona. Right. <laughs> I won't do that to yeah. you. Uh, Kyle Trask in Tampa Bay. Yeah. There was hope for him at one point, but I don't see it. I never really did, to be honest with yeah. you. 27 is Brandon Allen with the 49ers. I wasn't certain that was who he played for at the moment. <laughs> that was one I'm not sure I would have got. 20, wow. 26 is a tough one. They go from Darnold to Allen. Yeah. Bryce Young with the Panthers. See, a guy like that I'd have way higher. I would, too, because you I know? still think there's some promise there. Right. With some of these other guys that we're going to get to here, like, come on. I mean, honestly. He's not been good. Like, I'd much rather the Steelers quarterback situation than the Raiders. But the similarity for this argument is I can make a case for either. Yeah. And in Carolina, I think you can still make a case for either. I mean, he was horrendous. Don't get me wrong. Horrendous. Like the worst starter in the league. But you could make a case that he should go out there again. I'm betting he plays again before the end of this year. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're going to be 2-10 and 10 at some point. Yeah. You know. Put him back in there and see if he learned anything. Mm-hmm. 25, Jared Stidham with the Broncos. Okay. Uh, but people seem to like him, but we never – nobody likes him enough to put him on the field. No. 24 is your favorite. Tyson Badgett. He's okay. I mean, that's another one I'd probably have a veteran big brother, yeah. Charlie Badgett. For sure, Kowski yeah. Tyson type. Badgett right. now has fewer career starts than the starter. Than Caleb Williams. Yeah, exactly. Like He belongs in the league. I think he proved that last year, yeah. but that's not the way I'd have it set up for my first overall pick. Right. 23, Josh Johnson with the Ravens. Man. If something happens around. to Lamar, they're in trouble. Oh, huge, 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 huge. I mean, I might have him ahead of like Trubisky. 
Yeah. I mean, at least he's been around, and there's something to be said for playing as long as he has for 9,000 organizations. <laughs> bunch of different leagues. Some in the NFL, some not. Right, yeah. right. 22 Davis Mills with Texans. I had hope for him at one point to be a low-end starter. Maybe his day will come. I'm not saying he's going to have like a Geno Smith reclamation or anything. I think that, that ship has sailed. But I think he could be a better two than that. Yeah. 21 is Mac Jones with the Jaguars. That's an interesting tier. The Pickets, the Jones, yeah. the Howells, the guys that were starters last year that all got traded. I don't know how you rank them. Yeah. They got more experience than a lot of the guys below them here. Right. And they were and they asked had, to be the man and, and they it had didn't some, go well. Right. They had some pedigree. But a lot of those guys moved this year. Yeah. You know, guys that were on the billboards last year. But for Bryce a Young, thing. who's the number one overall pick yeah. last year, isn't ahead of those guys? I say if Mac Jones got thrown into Bryce Young's situation, would it have gone worse or better? Or who knows? Or yeah. Kenny was there or how or you know. Twenty, Cooper Rush with the Cowboys. He's proven to be fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's holding off Lance for the two job, too, and who hasn't proven to be fine. 19. Kenny Pickett with the Eagles. Preseason wasn't pretty. Wasn't pretty. No. He, it sounded like he was holding on for dear life to keep the two. But I also think there's value for... Played some football and, you know, was asked to be the guy for a while. Didn't go well. 18 is Taylor Heineke with the Chargers. That's the Case Keenum for yeah. life type. They're all their own. They'll play forever, you know. 17 is Nick Mullins with the Vikings. That might be kind. That's very kind. I, I think I'll take my chances even with Bryce Young to yeah. win a game for Kenny or, oh, you know, yeah. one of the former first-round picks. Say what you want about Pickett. He at least won games in the league. Right, right, right. Like, he he, he had a formula, yeah. and they won football games. And he made plays late in games, too, yeah. you know. I would have I would have him over this guy too. Sixteen is Hendon Hooker. With the, with the Who Lions. knows? You don't know. I mean, like I he played how... in the preseason. That's all he's played. That's all he's played. And you and knew he, he showed was some shirt. stuff, and it was fine. But yeah, and he would have got drafted a little higher had he been healthy. I don't know how you rank him. 15... I mean, I'll take my chance to win a game with Mac Jones over Hendon Hooker. At this yeah, point. at least he's played. You right, know, at least right. he's done it. Fifteen. He has Malik Willis with the Packers. Who? So a month ago he'd have been thirty second. Yeah, and he goes in, he plays two games, and, right. and one of them was a completely. They threw like twelve passes. Oh, sorry, they get like twelve attempts. They really managed the game. Yeah, and they got a lot out of them. Well, but I'd still rather pick it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd yeah, still yeah. rather I, 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 give me the Mac Joneses. Yeah, right. right they've right. they've started more, way more games mm-hmm. than Malik Willis, and uh, yeah. there at least was once good buzz around them. Right, fourteen. Mason Rudolph. I bet when it's all said and done, we'd have him higher than I that. I would have him higher than that. Yeah. I was He's certain, the best one yet. I would have him higher than the next guy on this list, is, which is who the Steelers are going to see this week, Aiden O'Connell. I would, too. I think the Raiders would be better off with Rudolph taking snaps right now. <clears throat> I do, too. Would you rather play against Rudolph or Pickett or Bryce Young? I'd rather play against— I'd rather play against Bryce Young because he's going to make mistakes. Yes. Then, pi- then pick it, and then Rudolph. Exactly, that'd be my order too. Yeah. Rudolph would be last <laughs> on my list of one game. Who do I not want to play against? Rudolph is the best one yet of these guys. He's a guy. He's the veteran guy. He's again hasn't played a ton, but, but enough. But he's played enough to know what he's seeing. He's mm-hmm. a smart guy. He'll get he'll get the ball where it needs to go. Right. I mean, I'd rather play against him than Levi, or I'd rather play Levis than him. Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd certainly rather play the guy in Cleveland. And then him. Absolutely. <laughs> or if, like, he was a saint right now, you'd be like, all right, he'll be okay. 12, Joe Flacco. Proving to be better. He should than be that. higher on he his list. He should be higher than that, right? He's, He's probably one of the top 32 on the planet. So. Definitely be higher than the next guy on this list. He has Mitch Trubisky at 11. I'd be way lower. He should be way lower. Way lower. Way at lower. least 10 spots lower. I, I'll admit, I was completely wrong on Mitch Trubisky. I had hope when they signed him. Yeah. You know? He would be way lower. At 10, Drew Locke with the Giants. I'd probably be lower, but teams seem to like him. Yeah. I mean, Seattle went out of their way I to make sure he, he was he part of the trade. I think are like the same dude. Yeah. I would roll my dice with Locke over him. At least there's a little more unknown. 
Trubisky's just proven to be bad. At nine, Sam Howell with the Seahawks. I'm fine with that. I mean, I think you win games with that dude. If he doesn't get killed. Oh, yeah. He's going <laughs> to throw picks and take so many sacks. I yeah. Mean, he's a 10.5% sack rate in his career. One out of 10 dropbacks, he, gets, <laughs> he goes down. That's not even the hits he takes and all yeah. that stuff, too. Right. Eight. Wow. Jimmy Garoppolo. I have no idea. Different podcasts I do. We've talked extensively about why would Miami go get Jimmy? Yeah. I mean, he knows the Niner system. Cost you nothing. Yeah, you know, the Rams would get rid of him for a loaf of bread. Yeah, just to get some, give me right. them picks. Yeah, give me picks. Yeah, they couldn't f those picks enough before. And now they want the picks. I don't know what to think of him. We haven't seen him in a while. Seven is Carson Wentz with the Chiefs. I haven't seen him in a while either. He might be Trubisky too. Right. He might be better. He might be Trubisky. Remember, he was in Indianapolis as the starter. And they, said, and they said, nah, he, we can't do this. Well, he was unemployed for a long time yeah. last year, too. I don't know if he's any good. I don't either. It, like, and certainly with the with the supporting cast that he now has in Kansas City. That's what it's about to go. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess it's not as good as you'd think. But what the example I was going to use is I really wanted to see Sam Darnold last year for like six. I don't want anybody to get hurt, but right. I would love to see Darnold with the Niners. Maybe it would look like this Vikings version of Darnold. Maybe it'd be a total disaster. But I'd love to see Wentz with Andy Reid and a good cast for two months. Yeah. Can he get it back, or is he shot? Yeah. Six is Tyrod Taylor with the Jets. He's probably six for the last six years. Yeah. Like, he's, you, you can win games with that guy, but he's not a starter. Five, he has Michael Penix with the Falcons. Who knows? But he deserves respect. Yeah. Played one game in the preseason. <laughs> I know. So we've seen one NFL game. One him, NFL right. game. At four, he has Russell Wilson. I think Wilson would be my one, but it I'm curious be, who these next three are. It should are. be Fields as the number two. And he would be my one, too. Yeah. Like, whoever that is, I think, is the best backup in the league. Unless these three names are escaping me. But this is the national media perception mm -hmm. of this Steelers quarterback situation, and I think they're completely wrong. Yeah, because he's never been the two. Right. He's still number one on the depth chart. Yeah, yeah. They haven't changed that. Would you have fields over everybody listed? Yes. Me too. Yes. And I'm curious who these next three are. I might have Flacco too. Yeah. You could win games. I mean, what if Flacco is a Saint? It'd be fine. All right. Three, he has Jake Browning with the Bengals. Now, he did some no. good stuff last year, but he's not the third best. He's not better than Russell Wilson. He's he, not better than Fields. Yeah, I don't think he's, he's better, better than, than Flacco. He's not better than he's Rudolph. He's not better than Rudolph. Yeah, Rudolph's kind of a comp. Yeah. They're not former first-round picks. They're not former starters. They're not potential future Hall of Famers. You know, like, not that Flacco is, he but did he's won the Super he Bowls, right? He did fine things last year. Yeah. But they also— If you had him 10th, I'd be like, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Two, Jameis Winston with the Browns. He'd be high on my list. Not ahead of Fields or Wilson, but he'd be high. He'd be my probably top five. I don't know if I'd have him ahead of Flacco. No, I would not. I, I would think, not. You know, yes, you went in and gave truth yeah. serum within the, the Browns locker mm -hmm. room. Oh, yeah, they want Joe. They want Joe. I assume this list was written before Flacco saw the field for the Colts. This came out September 29th. So, Bef so is that before the Steelers game? No, I think. No. No, that was two weeks ago, so no. No. He had just played one game, though, with them. And his the number one backup at this point was Drake May. I totally get that. I don't know where you put him, but he's who you want. Yeah. The promising young yeah, 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 yeah. guy. Third overall pick. Yeah. Yeah. If for some reason, Jaden Daniels hadn't gotten a start yet, or Williams, or... I mean, Penix was high, too. When Brissett, when, if they redid this now, Brissett would be five or six on this list. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and that's about right. It's one of those situations where you can see both guys. Yeah, but Wilson I think you Fields, definitely you know? want to have your, your, your backup should be on the top 12 on this list. The bottom 12 or The disaster. bottom 12 is what you don't want. You're right. The bottom 12 is you're not paying them, you don't care, and you're— They're just there holding the clipboard right. and you know running the second team or scout team in some cases. Some, some teams don't even carry three quarterbacks, right. which you know, is like crazy. I, like I say about Green Bay, like— they got a lot out of Willis. Good for them. I think he's a really good coach. But before that trade, though, it was like 
Clifton. Like they, they were just totally ignoring their Clifford number two. And, yeah. yeah, Clifford or whatever. Yeah. I'd rather have Clifford the big red dog. Right. I mean, yeah. there's a couple teams that just neglect it to no end. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. But it, it just shows, like, there are some guys starting in the league right now. Deshaun Watson, who shouldn't be playing at all. Oh, 100%. That are chosen starters, not yeah. because they're thrust in there because they have to be. Yeah. I mean, there's 10 guys on that list I would rather take my chances to win a game with than Watson. Yeah. No doubt. Including Winston, including Flacco, who were both Browns now or recently. Yeah. I, it just, I mean, they're they're married to the guy, though. Someone on that list is going to revitalize his career. Like Darnold would have been on that list last year yeah. and been high. Yeah. You know, is it Winston or Wentz? That ship probably sailed. We've probably seen enough of them. But we're going to see these guys this season. Again, as oh, you, yeah. there were 60, 67 quarterbacks played mm-hmm. last year. Like started well, That's just starting games. 67 started. That doesn't count the guys who came in in relief. Right. There's guys on this on this list who are going to play this year. Oh, there's Spencer ones- Rattler's not on this list. He's going to play this week. Oh, yeah. There's guys below this list that are threes. I mean, guys that aren't listed because they're not a number two even. Yeah. That we're going to see and be bad. One of them might be okay. You know, who knows? But guys that could revitalize their career, though, could pick it or how or young. Absolutely those guys could. Yeah. I mean, they may be a starter four years from now somewhere. You know, when when the Steelers traded Pickett and people said, well, that just shows he'll never play again. I'm like, are this you paying any attention over. Right. to what happens in this league? Right. I mean, Geno Smith took a long time before he popped up, and now he's like, if we did starters, he'd be 10th or 8th or something. You yeah. Know? So that's just the way it goes at the quarterback position. Darnold, you know, before the season would have Best been example ever, nowhere right? ever, nowhere on this list. They look at what Fields is doing. Yeah. I mean, it's come a long way. It happens. Um, anyways, let's get to another break. He is the Matt Williams, and I am Dale Lally. This is The Drive on the Steelers Audio Network. Matt and I will be back to finish up the show right after this. Welcome back. I'm Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson. And Matt, surprisingly enough, I got the Raiders injury report for today. All right, let's dig in there. It's a great way to that? end the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, once again, um, Devontae Adams did not participate. Yeah. Max Crosby did not participate. Didn't participate. Yeah. He's going to play, I'm He's sure. He's going to play, but, but yeah. they're, they're managing it. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tommy Eichenberg, who was limited yesterday, didn't practice today. I wonder how many snaps Crosby plays, though. Because one of the things I'm so impressed with him is he plays like 95% of the snaps. Yeah. I doubt he'll do that. Uh, Michael Mayer still missing in action. Uh, um, that's I a, hope it's not something major personal yeah. in his life. It probably is, or he wouldn't be missing We wouldn't be that, not there, yeah. But I would not count on him playing. Uh, Jacoby Myers, for the second consecutive day, did not participate in practice. Oh, man. That's a bad one. Uh, he's... Top five important Raiders. Yeah. Colton Miller, after not practicing yesterday, was limited today. It's better. He's top five important Raiders, too. Yeah. Um, Jackson Powers Johnson did not participate. Thayer Mumford was limited again, as was Dylan Parham. Okay. It's a lot of line stuff. Uh, DJ Turner limited once again with the hamstring, one of their wide receivers. Uh, Tyreek McAllister, the other receiver who had been out, uh, was a full participant today, so they at least got him back because they were down four receivers. Except I've never heard of him. Yeah, yeah. nor have I. Um, and then Zamir White, once again, did not participate. I'm not sure how much that even matters, but they don't run the ball well with or without him, but he's, I guess, their best back. Probably more Abdullah. You'd get Madison and Abdullah, I guess, would be your yeah. steady dose of those guys. Dylan Labe is on that team, too. Yeah, I always kind of thought of him as like this fantasy sleeper that could go by these backs that aren't very good. Hasn't yet, but I'd say he hasn't gotten any action. Yeah, I mean, I, you just don't know. You think mean, the coaching staff not trust him. There's right. all kinds of stuff involved with that. And Christian Wilkins is out, folks. Yeah, I mean, Christian Wilkins is on, on IR. Players. He's not even on he's the injury. No report. chance. The safety Mooring was not on this at all, though. Huh? Uh, he he came was back. A, he was a full participant again today. Okay, so. I mean, he's a good player. But if we were ranking the top ten. Most important Raiders, like six of them Crosby. are on this list. Yeah. Crosby and Adams are one and two. Wilkins, if he doesn't count, it's three. Yeah. More, uh, Colton Miller's not far Bowers behind. Bowers would be four. Yeah. Miller might be five. Myers is probably six. I'm not even putting a quarterback up there because they could just go with the other one. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not sure who's better of the two. Would you rather play against Minshew or O'Connell? 
I think I'd rather play against O'Connell. I'd rather play against O'Connell. Because Minshew can get hot. I mean, yeah. he could lose your game, but he could get hot and start completing passes left yeah. and right. You yeah. know, where I'm not sure O'Connell can. Yeah, I don't know that he's got that in him. All right. Yeah, so I mean, I'm not sure who's even next on my most important Raiders list. But we many of the ones I mentioned are either out, Adams, Wilkins. Might be Myers. Oh, I th- he was in my top five. Was he in top? Okay. Yeah, he was like the last one I mentioned. But then, yeah. I, you know, after that, I, I might consider some a couple of these offensive linemen mm-hmm. that are not looking good. Yeah, I mean, ugh, that's a bad situation for them. Yeah. Now again, half those guys that fly. doesn't mean the Steelers can't go out there and lose because their injury report looks bad as well. It does. But this is what everybody's dealing with at this point in the season. At least the latest Steeler injury report was more encouraging than disheartening. Yeah. This one isn't. Yeah, if we were ranking Steelers 1 through 10 of guys who aren't going to play in this game, obviously Alex Highsmith would be yeah. high on that list. But he hasn't been ruled out. He hasn't been ruled Well, Mike Tomlin said he's not going to play this week. So the limited practice oh, okay, today okay, is okay. probably so don't ramping him up, up for next one. week. Yeah. Okay. So but Leal, Jaylen, Herbig, and Highsmith aren't going to play. Yeah. Okay. But Jalen Warren... That one's possible. ...is ramping up in the right direction. Pruitt is too, right? Pruitt's ramping in the right direction. Yeah. Okay. At least that's some good news. And all the guys who were resting yesterday are back. You know, yeah. The, the Haywards and the Watts and things yeah, of that yeah. nature. Ogan Joby's going to play. Yeah. Again. Yeah. So, yeah, hmm. they're just in a. So, who are we on the fence on? I guess really just Warren and Pruitt. Yeah. I mean, those. And, and we said it Tuesday when Tomlin said those guys were doubtful. He never says doubtful on a mm-hmm. Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first time I can remember, you know, him saying something like that on a Tuesday. I'm like, that was strange. He doesn't. Yeah, that's a little hard. He usually says we'll leave a light on for him or something like that. Mm-hmm. Doubtful is like he's dangling it out there for him in a different fashion. Roman Wilson's 100% healthy, right? Yeah. I would be real interested in getting him a hat this week. And that's been a, a big uh, bone of contention with a lot of people. And here's the th- Arthur Smith was asked about it today. Like, oh, what's, really? What does he have to do to get on the field? He said, look, he missed all of the preseason. All camp. I'm pretty much all camp. Like, yeah. he's working his way back into game shape yeah. without playing in a game because you can't just throw him out there. He's been through, like— You know how hard it is to run a route? I and mean, run 60 of them. Where's you out? Even 20. Right. You know? and, and what's he giving you on special teams? Uh, nothing. Nothing at this point right. because he missed the entire preseason. So we knew this was going to be the case. Man, is he more valuable on game day than Scotty Miller? Scotty Miller was your he does emer- a lot of other. He stuff. was your emergency snapper when you need your uh, older right. older when you needed one. Oh, he can be a gunner. Too. He was a gunner when he when he right. needed one of those. I mean, and he's not a bad receiver. No, I mean he's People not. Don't gunner think about Shefsky. things like that. I know. I would, but like all our listeners, I want to see Roman Wilson too. Oh, I do too. I, I absolutely do. Yeah, but I he understand he might be better than Van Jefferson or Austin. He might be. We don't yeah. know. But it's I it. understand why he's not out there yet because you, you just can't take a mm-hmm. rookie. It's again, it's a different situation than taking a veteran like a Russell Wilson and saying, no, way different. You missed some time here. How long are you going to take you to be ready to go again? Well, he's done it before. Do you think Roman needs an injury to get a hat? He just needs to show the coaching staff in practice that he is ready to, to contribute and play, mm-hmm. and not just as a wide receiver, because you're not one of the starting wide receivers. Well, that's the thing is I don't think he's ever going to help on anything but wide receiver. He might be a, an emergency gunner for you, things of that nature. But you got to I mean, show that. He's going to be an emergency punt returner, right? Whatever you got to have Fine. some kind of value beyond just being a wide receiver. Yeah, I don't know where he will, he'll have that. I mean, they they have to have six gunners they like better than him. He's never done it at all. Yeah. I mean, give me any corner. That's He's got the a problem. better chance or any safety. That's right. the problem. Oh, I know. Until you absolutely need to play him, and, and they haven't really needed him. Now, he could be active because Cordero Patterson's down, but they're he's he's a running back. And so, mm-hmm. you know, do you look at that differently? Because, I mean, that's the thing is people don't think about this with running backs and receivers. If you're the number three running back, you almost have to be a special team. You better play special teams. Some sort. Definitely if you're a number five receiver, you do. And probably if you're a number four. So a guy like Roman has to prove he's a top three receiver. Now, that might be easier to do on this team than others. But how do you prove it if you can't? Yeah. You know, they're not going to put Austin or Jefferson on, you know, a healthy scratch. Right. And 
again, Scotty Miller's done some important stuff for you this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, is he going to be inactive? You can have five receivers active. Wilson might not get his jersey dirty. Right. But you want to see him. But you I mean, it's a fine line. Maybe there's this, untapped gold there. With, I don't with know. With some of the injuries that they have this week with guys who aren't going to play, mm-hmm. it might help foster that a little bit. And you give them 10 routes. But, the, you know, you also have to bring up probably both. At practice, least one of those outside linebackers. Probably both practice squad outside linebackers. Yeah. Because you've only got two who are healthy right now on the active roster. Yeah. Right. And what if Waka gets hurt? Right. Or what if he you know, misses a quarter? What if Jeremiah a... Moon gets hurt again? Like, now all of a sudden you're down to one guy? It's... Well, then you're playing just a whole different defense. Yeah. You know, like, I know we're up against it for the show, but might you see some 4-3? I mean, like, true 4-3 with, like, Wilson, maybe just live in nickel. Roberts, and maybe you're living nickel. Yeah. They don't run the ball that well anyway. Yeah. And they're a big 11 team anyways. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. You hope it's one more week. One week. Yeah, you just got to get through this one. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That is going to do it for the show today, Matt. Uh, so for my partner, Matt Williamson, for Justin Miller here on site, keeping us on the air, for Tyler Vitmeyer, making sure the video gets up. Make sure you watch the video. Come on. Oh, yeah. Watch we're, the video. We're gorgeous. Absolutely. Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> I'm Dale Lolly. We thank you for listening to this edition of The Drive on the Steelers Audio Network. Steelers football happens here. The Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network.